So will there be a double dip in the housing market? Joining us now is Sherry Olofsson, partner and real estate attorney at Fowler White and Boggs and author of Foreclosure Nation, Mortgaging the American Dream, and Brian Westbury, chief economist at First Trust Advisors and author of It's Not As Bad As You Think. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Sherry, I got to ask you because I, I think Larry just flinched when I said that that was a good report. Do you believe Diana's report? Do you believe that housing prices are really falling? Are, are sellers kind of getting religion and lowering their price right now to what the market will really bear? Right. Well, this, you know what, Melissa, this is all part of that deleveraging that we've been in the middle of. And uh, I'm all for the prediction that we're going to see another, what looks like another um, drop in the market. But what really is just a removal of the government support that gave the appearance of an increase in the first place. So, Brian Westbury, uh, first sure. of all, A, the phony tax credits for home buying runs off, and B, right. Case Shiller has actually right. been showing a creeping up of prices. So, I'm confused. Are home prices deflating or yeah. are they flattening to rising? Yeah, I, Larry, Case Shiller, which, by the way, was the worst in, in terms of showing the biggest decline in house prices during the recession and the panic, uh, has now been up. I think it's eight months in a row, and house prices. Prices are higher than they were a year ago, according to this index. So I would look at these uh, sellers cutting their price. They were probably pricing too high, pulling things down. What right. matters? What matters is what the selling price is today versus where it was a year ago, and that right now is rising uh, for the first time in a few years. Sherry, I mean, I'm arguing against my own interest here. I just bought a home, but isn't there a huge shadow inventory out there waiting to come on the market? We're really still in the middle of all of this, Melissa, and we're not even really dealing with home values per se anymore because home values are where they belong historically and, and right. very justifiable. We're dealing now with other problems that we created during and after the bubble. So now our issues are going to be more enduring, not as acute, but definitely more enduring. We're looking still at unemployment. We're looking at 28 million people potentially in a negative equity position. And we're also looking at the unraveling of some of the biggest government changes in the next couple of years as Dodd-Frank rolls out, as whatever changes are in store for the GSEs roll out, as the HAMP uh, programs sort of come to an end because we've got 9 million people who were promised solutions and 8 million of them are walking away empty handed. So those are surely going to have an impact as we move forward and the more government intervention we have the longer this is going to last. All right. So Brian right. is a weak housing market the tip of the iceberg for a double dip. Were you scared yeah. to death when you saw the Fed <laughs> announcement yesterday or are you your usual optimistic yeah. self? I, I, we are not in my opinion going to have a double dip. I mean and, and, and this goes true for housing too. Yeah sure we're in a little bit of a Slump. The housing tax credit just rolled off. But just like cash for clunkers, you know, that caused a drop in autos when it went away. And now autos are growing. They, they had a very nice month in July. We're going to see retail sales up big because of that. And I think the same thing is going to happen with housing. Think about this. Interest rates are extremely low. Right. Um, it's true that unemployment is high, but those people who are working are working more hours and seeing higher pay. So personal income is up. Savings is up. The, the per, consumer's balance sheet is in much better shape today than it has been in a very long time. And when I put all of that together, uh, it doesn't look to me like that's the recipe for a double dip. I yeah. think the stock market today is way overreacting. Sherry, I, I mean, doesn't Brian make a good point about interest rates, though? That is going to draw more people into the market as we see them continue to be low indefinitely. No question. And that does have an impact on how much someone can afford to pay for a home. On the other hand, we've got a boatload of other variables in terms of uh, the debt market. I mean, essentially what we're arguing over now is debt that we created during the bubble and who's going to be responsible for that. And unfortunately, a lot of it is tied to housing. Say, Brian, wouldn't it be a neat idea if Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, now owned fully by the taxpayers to about $150 billion bailout, if they forgave everyone who had an underwater mortgage would that be a cool idea what's your take what's your take on that buddy you know i i like another leading question <laughs> yeah larry larry I, I don't think so um you know what's what's good news about all of this is is outside of all this government help and all of these things what's happening is there's more renters today and fewer owners and we're seeing rent uh, people that are renting rising dramatically okay. i think we push the edge of the envelope way beyond anything that makes sense we tried to get everybody in America to own a home. That's not a smart thing to do. We need more renters and fewer okay. owners over time.